Hey guys, um, I think it's been about a week or so since I last spoke to you and um, I hope you guys are hanging in there okay. Um, hope you've been practicing breathing and grounding and dropping into your bodies um, and your senses. If you find yourself getting a little squirrely or uh, feeling some of that anxiety. Um, I wanted to do something a little bit different today. So what I want to talk about is actually something, I guess the idea is I want to give you something more positive instead of focusing so much on negative, potentially negative things, right? And I understand that we're trying to figure out ways to become comfortable in the uncomfortable space. And that's really important. But I also don't want to dwell there for too, too, too long. Um, those videos are out there. You can go back to them if you find that helpful to take a look at that and remind yourself um, some of the things that we talked about in those videos. But I do also want to move into uh, a sort of a positive space as well moving forward so that once you begin to hopefully feel some um, mastery, some a little bit of uh, control over some of those things which trigger your anxiety and you've begun to figure out different uh, ways of feeling more comfortable in the uncomfortable place, the next step is then to begin to figure out what you do with yourself, right? What you actively want to move toward, not just what you're trying to I don't want to say fix because that's the wrong word because it's not about fixing. It's more about figuring out how to look at something differently or to respond differently, right? Because I don't like to think of people as broken. Um, we're all in, in process, right? Um, I think that's a much more positive way of looking at these sorts of things. And I don't like to medicalize things if we don't have to. Um, anyway, so moving on. What I'd like to do today is to talk about one of my, another one of my favorite subjects, which is the subject, the, the idea of non-fruitive action. And I got to this, um, I got this inspiration this morning, actually for, from a phone conversation with an old and dear friend, uh, Lucy Miller Andre, uh, who I hadn't spoken to in a while. And we had this lovely freewheeling conversation, which is one of the gifts of this time, right? Is the opportunity to potentially catch up with some people that you haven't spoken to in a long time and to check in uh, with people that you haven't, you haven't maybe been checking in with as regularly as you might like um, in another world. And we're kind of in another world now, right? So the idea of non-fruitive action came up in the course of our conversation. And this is a, a term that actually comes from the Bhagavad Gita, is at least that may come from other places too, but this is uh, sort of a variation on a theme, right? And the idea of non-fruitive action is doing something for the sake of doing it. Just doing it either because you love it, because you are inspired to do it, um, because you want to, not because you should do it, not because you need to do it, not because there's some outside force pushing you in some way, but that it's something that you're genuinely coming to because you have a desire to do the thing, not to get a result, not to reach a goal. This is completely, the idea of this is completely goalless. You do not have a goal which I know is an odd thing because in our world, most of the time we're looking for goals. Well, right now we have some space and some freedom to maybe do some things without a goal, right? To, to take that, that sort of pressure off of ourselves. And I mean, you know, take your desk, take your arm and imagine sweeping your desk clear of everything. I'd take the computer off because you don't really want to drop that on the floor, but everything that can go and fall on the floor without injury, sh shoo it away. Forget your goals for five minutes, you know, and just open yourself to thinking about what would I do if I just wanted to do something for the pure joy of doing it, okay? And I'll give you an example, actually, of something that I started doing for a different reason, started with having goals in mind, and then slowly over time, I'm talking about writing this book that eventually will come out, 
<laughs> coronavirus may be tangling with that a little bit too, but you know, it'll come out when it's supposed to come out. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not concerned about it. But along the way, I originally started writing it as much as anything. I originally started writing it really because I felt the need for something to come out. Something wanted to come out. I had, I, I, I was, I was driven to write this, this, that to write about some events that were happening in my life and, and see where that went. And then as it went along, you know, the sort of almost inevitable. So originally I think my intentions were fairly pure writing the book. I just wanted to write. And I, and I got this bug to write, like I hadn't had since I was much younger and I had some space. I had some time in which I could write. I had been given the gift of time at this point in terms of my kid's age and some help that I happened to have when we were living in London and so on and so forth. So I had time to be inspired. I had time to pursue something creative, which I hadn't had in a while. And I had some inspiration. So th these three things sort of came together and I was able to, to write. And then as I moved along with the writing, then I became more concerned about, oh, what if I put this out there? You know, what are other people going to think? What are my parents going to think? What are my friends going to think? What if people think I'm a bad writer? Um, oh gosh, what if this was really successful and I became fabulously wealthy in the next JK Rowling, you know? Um, and then, oh, well, that's never going to happen. You know, I mean, you going through all these things and, and thinking, and this would get in the way of the creativity, right? This would get in the way of the inspiration because when I started spinning off in my head about, thoughts of either fears that I had or goals that I thought maybe couldn't be achieved um, or goals that I might want to want but was afraid to want. Um, any of those things began to then interfere with the creative work that I was trying to do. And it took me a while and I, I went up and down and up and down along this path. And I did eventually come to the place where I, I really feel like I am most of the time anyway right now, which is I don't really care what happens to the book when it comes out. I don't care. Um, I want it to come out. I want I want to have that thing in my hand. It's going to sell at least one copy because well, or I'm going to own at least one copy, right? And I'll probably buy a few for family and close friends. Um, but it doesn't matter what happens to this book because what really matters is the experience that I had writing it and all the stuff that I learned about myself. For one thing, learning about this idea of non fruitive action, right? Of coming back to realizing that I lost the creativity when I became fearful, when I became worried, when I got caught up in my head, instead of just allowing the creative juices to flow, when I started to get caught up in my head, it shut down the creative process, right? Shut it down. So, where else am I, is that happening in my life? You know, that's one of, the, one of the many lessons that I learned. What else am I, where else am I allowing that to happen in my life where I'm allowing fear to stop me from doing things, where I'm allowing goals that seem out of reach to stop me from even starting a project, right? Because I think, oh, well, I could never be a, a number one, and New York Times number one best-selling author, so what's the point of even writing a book, right? Or I would never be able to get a real publisher to publish my book, so what's the point of, writing my book. Well, the point of writing my book was actually all the experiences that I had writing my book, right? Fun, joyful, disappointing, difficult, all of it. I learned about worrying about other people's expectations and where I am in that. And I can see how I've progressed in, in that, worrying about judgment, worrying about all these things. And I can see how, how I've changed along the way from where I started. And, and I, I can see the, the circle of that journey. And for me, that's, that's it. I'm done. You know, if, if one person reads it, great. If nobody reads it, it really doesn't matter at this point. Because that's where I am. I am so excited that I actually did this thing, you know, and that I had this experience and that's what matters. So what I want you to do, if you will, if you're interested, what I invite you to do, that's the best way for me to put this. What I invite you to do is to take some time to think about what is it that you would really love to just have the experience of doing. If you could get, if you could shove the goals aside, not worry about what the goal is and whether that's something that's creative, whether it's something, you know, it, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's going back to school and getting some degree that you've thought about getting, whether it's 
Um, you know, oh, I don't have the time. I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't have the talent, whether it's writing, whether it's singing, whether it's playing music, learning an instrument, learning a language. I, it, it doesn't make any difference. If you had time to do anything that you wanted, what would you really enjoy doing? What do you really, really, really want to do? And if you don't know, and if even after sitting with it for a while, you don't know, then start playing, you know, start playing with it. What is it? You know, play with, just experiment. And maybe, maybe even experiment with, for, I mean, one thing that I do sometimes that can be helpful is I just start writing whatever comes into my head, for instance, right? There's just an exercise. You just write. Doesn't matter what comes into your head. Doesn't matter how crazy, whatever it is. You just, just write it all down. Just keep writing, keep writing, keep writing. And whether you write faster by hand that way that you can just write, 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 and ask yourself the question and then just start writing and see what comes out. Um, I think that part of, part of this exercise is also, um, and what I'm hoping for, for you, if you take up the invitation is to really spend some time in, you know, in your heart space to figure out what is it that really brings you joy? You know, what in your, what in your day brings you real joy? Um, and I was recently having a conversation with another old friend, um, and we were talking about what, what brings that person joy. And it's, you know, it's different for everybody. And for that person, it was trivia, you know, it was knowing stuff about stuff that nobody else knows and, you know, sort of getting your geek on. And that was exciting for that person. And, and why not? And why not? And what are, and then you can begin to think, well, what could I do with that? That seems such a, it seems maybe to that person seems sort of useless. How could I do that? Well, you know, maybe you can do a blog about that because there's lots of people who love, you know, sort of unknown trivia or fun, interesting connections between things that you don't necessarily, that the rest of us don't necessarily know or spend the time to find out, right? But we'd love to read about it. Um, so I thought, well, there is something that you could do with that. You know, there is potentially, you don't have to, but that's the whole point. You don't have to be able to do something with it. Does that bring you joy? Then do that. And, and what I think often happens is that if you do the thing that brings you joy, if you start spending time, you know, researching trivia, you know, whatever, finding out, you know, getting your geek on something potentially, not always, but something may arise out of that very naturally right? That's something that you enjoy doing that you can then begin to see a path of like, how can I do something that I really enjoy doing and maybe make money out of it or spend more time doing it just because it makes me happy. And again, I want to get away from and see how easy it is to fall into like, let's make it a goal. Let's make it money. You know, like even like I'm sitting here and I'm doing it right now. Right. Let's back up. Just do it because you love it. Just do it because you love it. And if something comes out of that, great but find the thing that brings you joy. Does research bring you joy? Does getting your geek on bring you joy? Does building stuff bring you joy? Does singing bring you joy? Does writing bring you joy? Does painting bring you joy? Does drawing, does petting your dog bring you joy? You know, does some particular form of exercise bring you joy? You know, one thing, one silly thing that brings me joy is skipping. And I know I looked like a total crazy person for any of you that saw me in Audubon Park. I used to skip in Audubon Park. I would. I loved it. It made me so I would skip and I'd be listening to music. I would dance sometimes. Um, and it was funny, you know, the reactions that I would get, but I didn't do it for anybody else. I was doing it because it generated joy within me. It made me happy to do that. So even something as silly as that, there's no goal <laughs> in skipping, right? There's absolutely no goal. It's just something that was fun. You know, um, it was fun for me. And so I did it. Um, and maybe I'll just leave you with that thought, you know, um, try to spend a little time in the next couple of days, just thinking about what brings you joy, what makes you happy, what sorts of activities, is it cooking? Is it cleaning? You know, I mean, I literally no judgment here, scrapbooking, um, you know, doing ancestral, um, research, it, it, the, I want you to think completely outside of the box and just allow yourself to think of the things that make you happy. Think about one time in the last week, when were you the most joyful? When did you feel 
really excited about doing something like this is what I want to do. You know, what's the thing you would save to eat to the end on the plate, right? Or what would you eat first? Okay, I'm going to quit babbling and I'm going to leave you to it. And I'm going to remind you to breathe and ground yourself in your senses. And then once you do that, maybe take a little time to just ponder, not even contemplate. Contemplate sounds like too much work. Ponder. What is it that you would really love to just do for the sake of doing it? And that's what I have for today. And I hope that all of you are well. I am signing off from a very snowy Idlewild. It's been a crazy week of weather here. We've had earthquakes, snow and rain, and right now it's snowing. And this weekend it's supposed to be sunny in 55. So we're getting it all here. Ciao. Talk to you soon.